are hush. We are back, honey. Our next guest is no stranger to the limelight. Founding member of pop and R&B boy band B2K, let's welcome Raz B as he joins us today to share his story. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So we've seen you in the media for various reasons. Um, is there anything that you'd like the viewers to know today? Well, I, I think, I think I, I, enough of my story is out in the world already for free. It is. And the fact that I'm actually producing a documentary uh, is already funded, it's a multi-million dollar project. Mm. There's a lot of things that I want to talk about, like pretty much everything I walked through from the uh, abuse as a kid to domestic violence and just so many things that's happened in my life. But I always tell people there's two sides of the story. So I do, I feel like it's a lot of things, but if there's something I could leave today with the people, it would have to be like, there's always two sides of the story and people don't really understand what triggered what, or, you know, being like a kid in this industry and not having your family around and the people that you look up to who's supposed to protect you could be like your, your own family members. I think that's a conversation that the world, especially our community, we should have, you know what I'm saying? Because no one, everyone shies away from that conversation. But a lot of people were molested, shall I say, by uh, their family members, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's a personal uh, matter that I feel, and it's a conversation that should be had. Really, I, I, at, a, at a time I felt like people were making jokes about my story. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like I had to, I don't wanna say, prove myself, but I mean, the, the truth is there, you know what I'm saying? But beyond that, I wanna change the narrative. I don't want every interview I go to, everyone's like, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? I feel like as a culture, you know what I'm saying? If people really genuinely care about me, you know what I'm saying? People should reach out and, and really check on the person versus like, you know, tease some people. And I, I, I'm really proud of where the culture's at now and today because everybody's a lot more open to, um, um, equality like like for example i didn't know that you were a transgender i found that out like two days ago oh and i was like hell yeah let's go it's okay. gonna be fun you know okay. what i'm saying because i mean you're living your truth mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying a lot of people won't understand your purpose and why god has you to be who you are you know what i'm saying so i just i just like we're we're starting to grow i do want to go back to the question and i want to ask you this why do you think people especially people of color uh like to sweep not accusations, but like to sweep the whole family molestation mm -hmm. and touching. Why do you think we people of color really like to just not really acknowledge or really accept mm -hmm. that? Like, what do you think that, think, that is? Uh, maybe, maybe embarrassment. Maybe people feel a sinful nature, you know, because the flesh is like we're the flesh is weak. but The spirit is always willing. Right. Mm -hmm. So the flesh loves the things of the world mm -hmm. of lust. Right. So. I don't know, maybe people are embarrassed. Um, I don't know, I just feel like everything needs to be, the, the, everything needs to be a balance. But we don't live in, I mean, we, I guess we live in a world that's somewhat a balance because you, got the, you got, the, got the evil and then you got some people that's out there that's trying to do good. I wouldn't want my children to get harmed. Right, and you know, I see this. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't harm my children, so it's like, Hmm. But I see this more so when it comes down to stories uh, uh, with, with when men, young boys come forth and they start uh, telling their stories. Because mm. usually when, when we talk about uh, molestation mm. or, or, or children being touched, it's always mm. more empathy or sympathy towards, you know, uh, the girls. And it's like when, when the men come forth and they start saying, hey, I was touched. I was I was molested. I was, I, I, uh, you know. I was fondled against my will. You know, it always comes back to... Um, I mean, the story's embarrassing. If you ask me, I remember when the video came out, you know, a lot, there's a lot I can't share, but I remember when the video first came out, like whatever you're dealing with privately, you know, should, especially as being a family matter, that should be taken care of private, especially when you're, um, you're an entertainer, you're a public figure, right? You wanna, you wanna deal with those, those issues. But I always told myself, yo, if I'm doing dirt, why, I'm not letting none of my dirt get out, like at all. You, you know what I'm saying? You're talking about protecting your image. And I just feel like being a kid in this big machine is just like, who was there to protect me? And the people who I thought was there to protect me essentially wasn't, threw me out to the wolves. Mm. So I had to figure it out for myself. So when people see me, you know, push back, I'm just standing up for myself. I don't, I'm, it's me, come see me. So. so what happened with the Millennial Tour? Tell me. Well, I mean, I put the tour together but you know, a lot of us haven't been around each other in like years, talking about the guys in the group. So I feel like there was a lot of like, 
um, trust issues. It was a lot of trust issues. So I think the best way for me to put that deal together, it was really like give everybody the deal, let everybody see everything in real time and full transparency. So um, shout out to Michael Jackson, rest in peace. But he asked me one day, he said, who owns the name B2K? So years later, I went and purchased the name and I put it on four of our names, which is a very noble thing to do. I could have, I should have put my name for myself, but that wouldn't be right. Nah, that nah, that wouldn't be right. Nah, but uh, nah, this is my brother. So I want, I definitely want to prepare a place for them. Um, and it was just amazing that it was able to come into fruition. But I was living in China for about seven years. I always felt that I was going to run into uh, some hiccups. I felt like there was going to be something to try to test me. On, on my road to greatness, I'm fulfilling my, my purpose of what I set out. Because, you know, putting the Millennium Tour together or putting Beach Care back together, essentially for me, was to give glory to the kingdom of God, to see all the joy and people and, and just to, to you know, uh, being the author and finisher of the, of the story of B2K. We'll talk more about that as well. I'm telling the story and I'm using my platform to minister to the people doing so with that, right? So for me, um, that tour in a way, um, Sometimes my brain wonders like, yo, were you set up or was those those enemy was those 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 hiccups that you that that you know that popped up? Um, for example, um, my girlfriend, you know, I'm 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 back in the country after seven years, been knowing her for 19, 20 years. I'm popping. I want to share my success with my my friend. You know, I feel like not everyone should be around. And me and her wound up getting into an argument, which led to a domestic violence. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't know where that stemmed from. That stems from a girl disrespecting me numerous occasions, punching me in my face, and I'm flying you around on first class flights, buying you Mercedes Benzes, walking into my, my meeting with 16 people out there at Viacom, looking to put me on Love and Hip Hop, and I share this moment with you and you ruin it. So whose fault is that? I don't blame her. I'm sad that me and her are not even talking as much anymore. But when I see <clears throat> her come up with her lies and her narratives, I'm like, you know, when do I said, you know, <clears throat> cause I connect with the people. I don't isolate myself from the people. I'm a real one, you know? But I was like, one, when do I get to monetize on my story? But two, for people to get a chance to know who I really am. I'm the, I'm the same loving, caring person. that wanna see everybody win and wanna share my light. But when I get abused and I push back on your problem, I, I was telling the girls in the back, I said, I, I don't know how long I would allow for, someone to punch on me and punch on me before my reflexes decided to grab you by your neck. And that's what happened? That's exactly what happened. So, so it's, nothing I'm, I'm, it's nothing I'm proud about, but it's just like, I mean, I, I just don't know how many times you can poke the bear in the cage. So I wind up going to jail. I'm off stage for two days. That affects the money on a tour. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It also adds excitement to the tour as well, but it affects, it affects the money. Now you lose your love and hip hop, now you lose your, your love and hip hop, uh, love and hip hop opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta always remember to be careful. You know what I'm saying? To protect your energy. I don't, I don't, I don't blame her for, for anything, but you know, I accept full responsibility for my actions. But if I was to point the finger, she wouldn't have been the person that needed to be around me for many reasons. And I won't put her business out there, but you have to have the right type of people around you, especially when you're moving at such a high level. We had the number one tour in the country. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so yeah, for me, so yeah, so that's what happened. Um, I didn't like the show. I thought the show was horrible. I thought it was, because I, I normally did like the B2K stages. I thought that was a, um, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't like the show at all. It wasn't a B2K show to me at all. So I didn't like it. Um, and then I just, weren't, I just I just wasn't, it didn't turn out the way I expected to, to turn out. You know, I felt like B2K should have did, you know, the movie, we should have did the album, we should have did, you know, more things, but that's a whole nother story. Okay. Well, let's talk about the LimeWire B2K NFTs curated by Roz B. Live, May 22. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, definitely. Moving on from the past and moving on to the future, we don't want to change the narrative. Um, I love B2K, right? For me, it stands for Boys of the New Millennium. But it's also been a journey from a boy to a king. And I feel like every king and queen should learn how to control their, their kingdom, keeping your thoughts under the captivity of Christ, right? So I look at my story and my journey and I tell you everything that I've been through is like a, you know, from a boy to a king. So this year we're celebrating 20 years. I'm the spirit of the group. I understand the assignment, right? So why would I alienate millions of people that grew up and followed and loved and fell in love with me? I'm the same person. But when you have people try to dim your light is what, is what we've seen 
Rasby walkthrough, whether it be in the industry. Because if you ask me, I, like somebody said, do I feel like people didn't support me? I said it earlier, but yeah, I feel that way completely. But nevertheless, I'm putting all of my story into these, these NFTs that I'm curating. Mm. Um, I also spoke with the guys to get their alignment, to get their support on it as well, which I got that, which is phenomenal. Um, you know, NFTs is the new wave, yeah. you know. Um, really, for people that don't know, it's a non-fungible token and you pretty much can resell it and you actually kind of, us being in the digital era, you know, what can you own that's tangible? So now it's pretty, it's pretty much like people are owning digital assets. I don't know, I got a bunch of NFTs and people be trying to buy them from me all the time. So it's pretty, it's, it's an exciting new, new space. I think I love the fact that the industry is changing to more of decentralized networks where the people we've always asked and we've always wanted to be uh, in control. And now we have that opportunity to do so, right? Now you have, you can, it's direct to consumer. So I'm really, really excited about this project. Uh, and me, me doing this deal with LimeWire, which is pretty cool. Um, they're about to launch in May. They have some really big artists that they signed, which is pretty cool. Um, and I'm also brokering a few other major artists deal over here as well. Oh, that's good. So I'm always hustling. Always hustling, always making a lot of money. Hey, you got to do it, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, recently we've seen you back out there on the road and, and performing. Um, what is What are you currently doing for yourself and your career outside of the NFT? Right. Well, I mean, living in China for about seven years, I learned a lot about tech. So I have a lot of my money invested in tech companies. Um, one of the companies that I, um, I have shares in is a company called U42. This company is worth about a half a billion dollars. We're based out of Atlanta as well. Content creators get to monetize at 100%. So for example, like you're, you're like your own like Netflix slash Amazon slash Hulu. And you have, uh, we signed, they've signed quite a few people over there like Pooh Bear, I think Tiana Taylor. Because, you know, no disrespect to these major platforms, they're really cool and we've all used them. But you don't own your content when you upload to Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, you know. They own your content and they monetize on your content and they own your data. That way, you know, that's like, for example, they lock Kanye West out of, you know, Instagram. He doesn't own those relationships anymore. Of course, he's Kanye. He can go wherever he wants to, right? I love Kanye, by the way. I love him to death. I love him to life. And, um, but U42 is so cool because 60% of the ad revenue goes to the consumer. Mm -hmm. 30% goes to U42 to keep the bills on. 10% goes to the consumer for watching the ads. So it's an ecosystem. Um, it's publicly, um, it's, uh, it's on Ethereum blockchain technology. And I, I like the fact that they have their own ecosystem where you have to come into their world to use their stuff. And I think that's really cool because it empowers everybody involved. Listen, this conversation is so good, but we gotta pay some bills, okay? Let's do it. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more Rise B after this. Yes. You don't wanna miss it. Yeah. Thank you.